Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. So one of the things that I greatly enjoy about filming on my channel is the ability to find unique little things. Makers throughout the world that have very unique and interesting little products and that's what we're going to take a look at today. So what we're going to look at today is some products by Nikolos at Baypacks. So Baypacks is a company that you can find on Instagram or baypacks.bigcartel.com and Nikolos makes some very unique, interesting little items. Now these items are kind of EDC items. They're a little bit trinkety and sort of mojo-esque and things that just catch my attention. And when I saw his items, I was very, very drawn to them. So I reached out to Nikolos to say, hey man, I am interested in taking a look at some of your things. Would you be willing to work with me? Now in full disclosure, I purchased these items straight from Nikolos. I had him make me some very specific things for a very specific reason. And the first thing you will see is this interesting little knife. This is called a Gayang Cleaver. So this small, interesting little knife made from 5160 steel has a beautiful tiger wood handle. Just a cool, I would say almost like Polynesian style design. When you look at this, it just has that kind of, uh, I don't know, Polynesian look to it. And I don't know if that's exactly accurate, but that is just what that brings to mind. Fit with this nice small leather sheath, a quality handmade package from Nikolos at Baypack. So this is the first item we're gonna look at today. And second, a couple of small copper trinkety little mojo items. These to me are very cool. I love little things like this. I attach them to my backpacks. I use them as lanyards. I bring them with me on my backpacking excursions and just something that in my opinion is totally cool. Now with that said, I have a number of details to show you and if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to talk about, do me a favor, stay tuned. So what I really wanted to get from this Bay Packs knife build is something that I could bring to the workplace to cut my food. A lot of times I have leftovers, different types of meat and things that I kind of need to cut up. So to have a good knife that's capable yet isn't crazy large and scares people away, it's definitely something that I'd like to have. And so when I saw this design, it looked to me to be kind of in that like perfect sweet spot where it's a good quality size knife, has the capability to cut my food the way I need to, but isn't crazy. Now I can tell you that it has had a couple of funny looks to it. People are saying, wow, that's a crazy knife. I mean, to me, it's not really crazy. I think this is kind of a unique and interesting shape. This is considered to be a Gayang knife, which is sort of a traditional shape. Now, a lot of times a Gayang knife is actually a little bit larger. This is a small version and to me was just perfect for the food tasks. So today I'm just preparing some food, getting ready to eat my lunch and figured I'd show you this in a little bit of action. So this is nice and sharp and slicey. And as I show you here, these really clean cuts, the shape of this is nice where it has that sort of pronounced tip and the ability to get right down and through the food. What's interesting is because of the overall height and depth of the blade, it actually does a real nice job here. You'll see just kind of slicing down through the food and getting right down and through it. So even though this is a slightly larger piece of chicken, this knife does a great job. I kind of can get down and through and slice real easy. Now carbon steel is great for the kitchen, but it does have the ability to potentially patina with marinades and things like that. So if you don't want a patina, you're gonna to have to get on cleaning it really quick, but there's really not much you can do. And I actually enjoy that. I love the look of a knife with good quality use, especially in the kitchen. I greatly enjoy using all of my knives for food prep and different eating and kitchen tasks. So if it's gonna get a patina after use like that, I am perfectly fine with that. But it's all you really need, just a little good dish soap, a little bit of detergent, some warm water, clean that thing up, no problem at all. Now 5160 to me is a great steel. I do enjoy it. I find it's a little more rust resistant than 1095. 
So things like marinades, mustards, vinegars, anything from food that could potentially patina a knife, I feel like does a little less to 5160 than to 1095. But as you look at the blade here, you will see it just has the slightest patina. Now this already did come with a little bit of a patina on it, so that nice dull gray look, I very much enjoy that. It also looks to have a little bit of like a hamon line, which is pretty cool. And then very, very slight micro bevel on the bottom. That is pretty much from me stropping this knife and kind of wearing away some of that patina. But this has been great. Excellent little knife for these food applications. And you'll see here that beautiful tiger stripe handle. You do have the ability to get this in ebony wood if you prefer but I thought this tiger stripe would be a nice little addition. That is just a beautifully shaped handle, nice and ergonomic, indexes very well, has a little lanyard hole if you'd like it, but for me, just this perfect little size, fits in my EDC bag, helps me eat my meals every day. Now I do very much enjoy maintaining my blades and where this is going to be used for food, I wanna make sure that anything I use is food grade, so just adding a little bit of vegetable oil here to the handle and treating the wood. You can do this on a number of occasions. Just keep it nice and oiled up and looking really good. And the key being that where I wash this all the time using it for food, I want to make sure that I do protect the wood. So getting that nice amount of oil just soaking into the wood there and then also on the blade just looking mighty fine. So just a little bit of protection can go a long way. And at this point, wiping off a little bit of the excess, cleaning that up just a bit. You'll see that beautiful shine, nice luster on the handle. This tiger wood is absolutely beautiful. So this is just a cool little knife and offering from Bay Packs. Now when I said Polynesian design, I don't think I was too far off. This is actually considered to be a Borneo Gayang cleaver. So Borneo basically being Indonesia and Malaysia. So Malaysia is where Nikolos is from and creates these knives, these handmade knives, just beautifully done. Again, 5160 steel, this tiger wood. Now you do have the option to get this in ebony if you prefer. I thought the tiger wood would just have a nice pop to it and look very, very nice. Now he fits these with a small leather pouch, which works perfectly well. So for me, this is an EDC option. I wanted something that was gonna be small and fit in my EDC bag so that every day I can use this to process some food and use it to really eat my lunch. So this was an interesting shape. Now, there are a number of different knife designs that you can choose. This just happened to be the one that really I gravitated towards naturally. I thought it would be an interesting design, something that I would enjoy, and it's just different from everything else that I own. So here, taking a look at the Borneo Gayang Cleaver. Here you'll see the business end having that unique shape, something that to me, I naturally gravitated towards just because it was so unique and different from everything else I own. So when I see a nice quality handmade product that's unique, it just screams out to me, hey, take a look at this. And that's the case with all of these Bay Packs items. That little logo etched right in the corner there, up near the handle, very interesting and nicely done. With this tiger wood handle, just beautifully sculpted, fits ever so nicely in my hands. So as we talk about the fit in my hands, you'll see that this indexes very nicely, has a good comfortable grip. So your finger just naturally indexing right there in that choil, right on the handle. And then my hand just wrapping right around. Now with a large size hand, no problem. This is an ample grip capable of giving me good purchase on the knife and indexing very well. And I find that my thumb just fits very naturally right on the back of the spine of the blade. Now, I do also find that I choke up on this a bit and I have the ability to do a little bit of detailed work, which is nice. So this knife is very cool. I really, really enjoy the shape and the feel in the hand and how comfortable it is. And it's lightweight, even though this is 5160 steel, very lightweight because of the wood handle. So generally speaking, a very nice piece. And the leather sheath fitting so perfectly. Now the blade is sort of a funny shape, so the sheath 
has to be made a little bit awkward, just a touch, um, with the ability to stay on the knife, but also accept it into there. So that is the one thing that, you know, the sheath is simple and very nicely done, has these little brass rivets, but you'll notice it does need to take the shape of the blade. So in order to get it in the sheath, and it's not a big deal, you just kind of need to be careful making sure that you get the blade up and inside inside of that first rivet and then setting it into the sheath now this stays on here very well has no problem there is no real strap or anything like that and then for me where this is simply an EDC blade I'm gonna keep it in my pack so it's not like I need a clip it's not like I need to put this on my belt for me it's a very simple design and a simple knife and that is what has that allure to me and a couple of very subtle little things, like for example, the fact that this has that sharpening choil right on the end of the blade. I very much like that. I like when I can sharpen my blade all the way to the back, right up against the handle. That works out very well. Now the grind, I would say, is considered to be a flat grind, but as I feel this, it may be a little bit convex. I mean, taking a look at it in profile here as I look down the blade and as I feel it with my fingers, it feels like it might have a little bit of a convex to it, but generally speaking, I'd say it's kind of more of a flat grind. Now you do end up with this kind of flattening out up towards this hole here. So that is basically the full flat thickness of the stock here. And then part way down, just that flat grind going into this interesting blade shape and profile, a beautifully pronounced tip, very, very precise and dainty. Now, I don't expect to be doing any hard work with this knife at all. I pretty much plan on using this for general tasks, maybe camp tasks, but most likely to be realistic, EDC tasks, using it to eat and cook my food and process food and things like that. I like this overall just for that general comfort and the idea that this is a, sort of like a low profile knife. It's not like a big crazy knife that's gonna catch people's attention. It's small, it's capable of doing the work that I need to. So where I'm bringing this actually into the workplace, I wanted something that wasn't gonna be too showy and too loud and catch people's attention. That's exactly what this does for me. Now moving into some of these other items. Here you'll see a copper skull buddy. I thought this was a very interesting design. I like this little sort of trinkety thing. I like Mojo for my backpacks. I like it for my EDC carry, but mostly to bring it out into the wilderness. Not that I necessarily need Mojo when I'm on the trails. Being outside in the wilderness is enough, but I think there's something fun to having just a little Mojo on the back of your pack. And that's what this little Skull Buddy is for me. Now, Nikolos, took the time to sculpt in OL for Outer Limitless, kind of customizing this and personalizing it just a little bit. So definitely a cool little item that I greatly enjoy. And here a bit of a dog tag. So here the Outer Limitless name etched into this little dog tag, this cool little brass skull. So a copper tag with a brass skull, little two-tone action on this little bit of paracord here. Again, I carry this on my backpack. It is kind of cool. You can see here that the back is starting to patina just a little bit, which is nice. So copper is a very fun material. I enjoy copper for a number of reasons and mostly the idea that over time, it will patina, it will age and get character, and it has just a nice little pop. And then for me, the other thing, which if I wanted to, where this is kind of jingling around, sometimes when I'm out backpacking, I go through these tight areas, I'm worried about wildlife, there are possibly bear, so to have a little bit of noise is not the worst thing, so I could potentially use this on the back of my pack if I wanted to add just a little bit of noise. But for the most part, it's really just for fun. These are items that are just kind of cute and clever and catch my attention. So when you look at these combined with this beautiful Gay Yang cleaver, just some great work from a wonderful little custom maker. So all right, Nikolos at Bay Packs, I'd just like to say thank you very much, man. I appreciate your creativity. I appreciate your style. And I appreciate you working with me on this little project. Very fun. I have been greatly enjoying this knife. I think it's beautifully made. I encourage all of you to support Nikolos at Bay Packs. Check him out on Instagram, Bay Packs at Instagram, as well as baypacks.bigcartel.com. So all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. 
I hope you liked what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.